What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be doing a beginner's guide on the items and how some of the basic currency items work in Path of Exile 2 as opposed to Path of Exile 1. Now, do note that this information, a lot of it is very limited. We have the very basics, but it's still a lot, especially for new players uh, and people coming into PoE 2 for the first time or just Path in, uh, of Exile for their very first time. Now, so we have items here which is very, very cool. We're going to go ahead and play. Shout out to Jonathan Majors and GGG for sharing the information with us and some of the basics. So very similar to um, to Path of Exile 1, you're going to have your, your different uh, gear types, okay? So inside your items, you're going to have your different rarities or classes um, of them. So you have the four different types here. You're going to have generic, rare or excuse me uh magic rare and then unique or if you'd like to call them legendary because that works best for you you can now these are the different categories of the items which is very similar to path of exile one it's the same thing that we had in path of exile one obviously the more rare that the item is the more modifiers that you can have on here which is what you see on the screen now each item can have up to three implicits and three uh, implicits and explicits. So let me swap over to actual Path of Exile 1. So you can see in here that we have the implicit modifiers and the prefixes. That's the other ones. Excuse me. So we have uh, three prefixes and three suffixes. Okay. You can have three of each, no more, no less. And then the implicits on there are additional modifiers, which come with the the weapon of choice here. So um, each one can have an additional amount. It's very, very cool. And as you upgrade something, it's going to make it even more. And then you have your unique items, which these stats are always the same. It's just the percentages of the stats that change. So if I open this, you can see that like on the caster speed, it's 8% increased attack cast speed. Um, and the range is 6 to 10%. So I can still try to get a better rolled item of these, but all the modifiers on here, your prefixes and suffixes, are going to be exactly the same. Now, if I swap back really quickly, so we have the four different types, which is awesome, right? So now, as you're going through the game, all of the items that drop are completely random. It's RNG. You know, th these are going to be just stuff you find on the ground. However you are gonna be able to add modifiers and increase these. So how you do that is with some of these um, items you have here, like exalted orbs. They add a rare um, item. Then you have orbs of transmutation that upgrades a normal item, which would be gray, to a magic item, which is blue. So you can see that it upgrades it from blue or from gray to blue. And it added one additional modifier here, which is very nice. And then we can take the orb of augmentation and take the magic item and add a new modifier, which adds two. It gives it its second modifier. Now, keep in mind that blue or magic items can only have two modifiers. That's all that you get. However, if we take a regal orb here, it upgrades a magic item to a rare item. Now, keep in mind that when you do use these um, currency items to upgrade, you are keeping the um, modifiers that you're adding on. So you can see that it kept the other ones and all it did was add one more, but it made it yellow. So now once it's a rare item, that's the highest rarity it can be. And now we're going to use an exalted orb to fill in the other three slots. And this makes it a random modifier. So as you can see here, he's going to add one, going to add a second one, and then we're going to add a three, a third one. So this is going to fill in. So you got your three, um, uh suffixes and your three so you got your three suffixes and then you're gonna excuse me you got your three suffixes and then you're gonna have your three um where is it suffixes and prefixes i always want to say implicits but it's prefixes so you got your three prefixes up top and then your three suffixes down here below so once you've maxed out all six then the item can't add any more and that is it your item is set which is really, really cool. So these items are made to basically be found throughout the campaign and your playthrough experience. And you're going to be able to find these currency items much more common as opposed to PoE 1, where like that stuff doesn't drop a whole lot, which is kind of discerning. But 
In PoE 2, you're going to be able to do that. So that way you can kind of upgrade these items that you find along the way, which is really, really cool. Same thing you can do on the belts, which I think is awesome. You can craft these and you just continuously upgrade stuff as you're going along. Now, one way to get another way to get some of these currency items and shards besides just finding them on the ground from killing monsters is disenchanting them. Okay. So he goes over this where if you disenchant armor and you disenchant weapons, you're going to be able to get some of these items that you can use to modify your current items, which I think is awesome, right? Like you can just do it uh, as opposed to like, man, I, I hope I just find some or I'm going to have to buy some, which is very, very cool. So next, that's something new to Path of Exile 2 is these sockets. So you have sockets here. So I'm, I am going to unmute and just showcase this a little bit. Because this is really, really you important information. By disenchanting unwanted gear at the magic item vendor. So you if got you disenchant magic items, bang. You can build up to an orb of transmutation. Yep. And by disenchanting rares, you can build up to regal orbs. So disenchanting rare items, which would be your yellows, give you regal orbs. Another. So now this is brand new content with the um, sockets, guys, which I think are going to be really cool. Poe two is sockets. Some items you find will have sockets that can have Ezemite runes placed in them that add more mods to the item. So you're going to be able to add sockets to all of your gear pieces, including your weapons. I don't know if we're going to be able to add sockets to jewelry. That information has not been received yet, but then you'll be able to add runes to these, which will give us even more modifiers. So, for example, on your resistances, you can see like he has fire and lightning. You could add a rune that says, oh, well, now it'll also give you cold resistance if you need to try to cap out all of your resistances as an example. So I insert this glacial rune into my helmet that will give extra cold resistance. See? Boom. Now, even though it's not shown on here because it's not actually a part of the item, it is going to show up top with these dots here that shows that you have a rune in here. And you can see that if you put this glacial rune on a weapon, it'll add cold damage and into any armor piece. So gloves, boots, armor, helmet, that, or possibly even the belt, uh, it just adds 12% cold res, which is huge, right? Like this is, this is such a good way to kind of round out your character. A great way to solve problems that you have with yep. the build. Like resistance solve problems. Damage. It's so good. If you find socketed items that you don't have a use for, you can take them to the salvage yep. bench in town to work towards an artifice's orb. So you can come in here in town to the salvage bench and you can salvage equipment items with quality or sockets for it. So by salvaging an item that has a socket, it'll give you an artificer's orb, which will add a socket to a martial weapon or armor. Now, you can also do this same thing with quality. So you can do this to get quality stuff as well to increase the quality of your items by up to 20 percent. So you could salvage these items which will give you the wet stones uh, and the weapon stones and the armor stones, these three stones here, which will incre increase the quality of your item. Uh, to show this, you can see that my claw here has a quality of 20%. So when you have an item that is, has more quality, it increases the damage of your weapon, increases the modifiers of your weapon. It does everything, right? It just makes it better. So it increases the critical strike chance, increases my physical damage. And then the quality is just better. So eventually you will want to get quality of everything. You can see here that the whetstone increases the quality of a weapon. The armor scraps increase the quality of armor. And then you have glass blowers bubble, which increase the quality of a flask or a tincture. Uh, and then you have gem cutters prisms, which are going to increase the quality of, ge of uh, jewelry. Or excuse me, a gem. Uh, so you can increase these items. Now you can do the same thing in Path of Exile 2, um, which is really, really cool. Um, to just kind of make your character even stronger, right? So this is just something that's very, very nice. Now, the next thing is, is that you can buy these items. Um, as you're playing along, guys, you can go to the vendors and you have a brand new currency that's been permanently added to the game in Path of Exile 2. And they're trying to make the main currency of the game, which is gold. And you can use that to buy items from the vendor. Um, which give you stronger items, right? Like you can buy these and it shows you what's on there. And what's great is, is that as you level up, so I'm level 10, I hit level 15. Each time you level up, 
it will change what is in the vendor. So there's no like, oh, well, I'm just too strong. There's no items in the vendor. I don't even have to look. No, they change and go towards your level. So that way you can get really good items along your playthrough, which is very, very nice. Next is coming over here and gambling for items. So you can come here to this vendor and you can randomly pick a, a type so any one of these types, and then it'll be a random roll of essentially what it is. So you will have this wand here, but it will be random as far as like rarity. It'll be random what the modifiers are, and you don't get to pick it. It's just a random roll. However, there is a really good chance that you could get a very strong item for your character if you have the gold just to spend, which I think is a very cool thing. Having a, ga a gamble roll, it's kind of nice. You got a little extra currency, go do it. The next thing the gold is going to be great for is refunding your passives. So you're going to be able to redo these as much as you want, which is great. Gold is much better than finding the orbs. In Path of Exile 1, you had these orbs of scouring as well as the orbs of regret, which refund passive skill points. And this removes a modifier from an item, which I think is, is cool, but it's just kind of annoying at the same time. So these items are working very, very similar to Path of Exile 1. In addition, you guys can also get more items from the currency exchange, which is what people, real people, put up on the in-game currency exchange to sell. So as an example, you have uh, for this item, this item is selling. It's a div. It's selling for chaos orbs at this ratio, so three to one. So you can buy one chaos orb, or excuse me, orb of alchemy. I'm sorry. So you can spend one chaos orb, um, and you have three orbs of uh, alchemy so what this ratio is just showing is that you want to buy a chaos orb and you are wanting to trade orbs of alchemy the ratio is three to one so you can spend three to get one chaos orb and this is just what people put up and it's great because you just once you buy it and place the order that's it you instantly have it you do not have to wait for somebody to join your party and then trade with them it's just instantly a thing however guys also with any of the items in path of exile 2 all of it is completely tradable. There is nothing bound but gold. So anything that's gold, you can accept gold. You can absolutely trade with everybody in the game, which is just awesome. It's one of my favorite things about Path of Exile just in general. Being able to trade you know, everything from gear and items to currency to you know, resources that you need to like you know, increase the quality of an item or add a modifier to an item. Like having all of that is just such a really good um, tool when playing this game, especially as a newer player. Um, next is the rare or, or excuse me, legendary or unique items, if you want to call them, whichever. I just call them legendary because they're just, they look legendary. Again, like I described, guys, these can be found still at random, but the modifiers and what the unique or legendary item does is exactly the same. It's just the roll again. And in Path of Exile 2, there's some really cool things that they do now. In addition to them just being here, there's some really cool stuff like these boots here, the corpse, uh, corpse Wade. You run over a corpse and it creates this smoke cloud, which just triggers this and can deal some damage to people, which I think is really cool. Then you got Sands of Silk here, which grants blank. So you can see that you just teleport through. Now the teleport does, the blink, this thing does replace your evade. So it doesn't, or your roll. So when you roll, instead you blink, which is really, really unique. I really like it. You just blink away. I think that's so cool. And they brought back a classic, which is Quill Rain. And just increases your attack speed. It just makes you feel like an absolute god when you're just shooting arrows. It makes you feel like Legolas from Lord of the Rings. So each unique has very, very strong... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, capabilities, but the items essentially work very, very similar to Path of Exile 1, but it's going to be really cool to see that like these kind of currency items are going to be much more common. So you're really going to have a big opportunity to craft more items, which will get you used to crafting, which we'll talk about in another video and just really make your character powerful through the campaign, which I think is just absolutely awesome. So yeah, guys, this is a breakdown beginner's guide to items and how some of this stuff works in Path of Exile 2. If you guys have any questions or anything, or maybe there was something I missed or didn't cover, let me know down in the comments, guys. Make sure to like the video. That really helps me with the algorithm on YouTube. 
Uh, don't forget to subscribe, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.